This is the lecture for part three of the essay on the common saying that may be true in theory, but is no use in practice. Uh, this is this part of the essay is against Moses Mendelssohn, so we have a picture of uh, Moses Mendelssohn up here instead of Kant. Uh, so this is a short reading, and the only thing you need to know going in is uh, if you think back to the previous reading, and specifically the lecture for the previous reading about Ullmann's uh, article, I talked about uh, Kant's transcendental philosophy and uh, noumena and phenomena, and one of the points I made there was Kant gives transcendental arguments, and transcendental arguments, Kant, sorry, Kant sometimes gives transcendental arguments. It's not like everything he does. So anyway, uh, Kant gives transcendental arguments sometimes, and what those are are arguments that you must presuppose certain things in order to, you know, do something or make sense of something. Uh, he says we must presuppose cause and effect in order to do science. We must presuppose free will in order to sort of exist in the world, and so on. And I just want to bring that up again because he's doing something like that uh, in this section and that I don't know if it's easy to miss or not but it's at least possible to miss and you'll certainly uh, mess up the reading quiz if you sort of miss that he's doing this so uh, pay attention to Kant's transcendental argument in this essay or in this section of the essay oh and I, I should also mention before we go so that's number one transcendental arguments uh, number two uh, so this is our the beginning of our unit on uh, Kant's sort of global justice uh, views or global relations views. So uh, we've been looking basically at how the state should work and how uh, external freedom and right work in the context of the state. But Kant had stuff to say about how states should relate to each other. And this is uh, obviously a very large topic. So just because you've figured out how the state works, that doesn't tell you how the world should work because there's many states in the world. And so this introduces us, it gives us a very, very broad picture of what Kant has in mind here. And then we'll see the much more worked out version in uh, Perpetual Peace. And we've also seen a tiny bit in what we've read so far uh, from the Doctrine of Right. Uh, but so this is just, you know, to get yourself in the mindset of what is the project here, uh, trying to figure out how states should relate to each other. And unlike uh, in the Doctrine of Right, and how states should work themselves, where the main uh, interlocutors were people like Hobbes and Locke, who had accounts of how the state sort of has a right to pass laws and things like this, and how we move from the state of nature to civil society. The main people Kant is talking about uh, and thinking about here are, I think they come up if you're reading the end notes. Uh, he has in mind people like uh, Grotius and Pufendorf and Vattel, these are philosophers who sort of had accounts of uh, sort of the right of nations and what the right of nations is, or the law of nations. And the law of nations are sort of, you know, the rules uh, that govern relations between states, and so uh, including the relations between wars among states. And so uh, the rules regulating war were a very big concern, and then rules regulating things like trade, uh, so who should control uh, the oceans, uh, who should control waterways, uh, should, must you let people into your state, uh, things like this. And so these are the kind of uh, topics that Kant is going to try to be figuring out. But as usual, uh, Kant takes kind of a broad picture approach to these things, but uh, he's actually much more specific in perpetual peace than he is in the doctrine of, right. well, yeah, I mean, you'll, you'll see when you start reading perpetual peace, but here uh, when he sort of gives this cosmopolitan point of view, the broad overview of what's going on, this is when you get like a good overview of what he's trying to sort of assemble in perpetual peace. So this is a good introduction because not only does it give you sort of a summary, but really it gives you like a uh, like a top-down view of what's coming.